like some back. Uh, I've been uh, rather busy and uh, I've had a few people ask for an update on uh, you know, my quest for free energy. After uh, conducting a number of experiments based on uh, Tesla's work, Edwin Gray's work and uh, a number of other uh, experimenters work I've concluded that something's missing so I've gone back to the beginning uh, so I did a, went through uh, all the research notes that I had basically went back to the uh, material containing the free energy secrets of cold electricity page 19 it talks about Tesla um, experimenting with radiant uh, shock waves and he's searching the literature for references and he finds two one um, Joseph Henry and another one uh, Ella Hugh Thompson in 1872 in Philadelphia so I, I thought I'd check all the references I could find for Ella Hugh Thompson and this is what I found. Okay, now this uh, picture here is a um, a diagram from L. Hugh Thompson's book called Wireless Transmission. So this was the setup that uh, Tesla was researching into. Now basically, for those who don't know um, the story, basically it goes something like. Um, like this, attaching one pole of the coil to a cold water pipe and reactivating the coil, Thompson was thrilled to find that the nature of the spark had changed from blue to white. Wishing to amplify this effect, Thompson attached the other pole to a large metal tabletop and this produced a shrieking silver-white spark entirely visible to anyone who sat in the last row. Okay, this is on my Amazon Kindle. Um, in this article here, on a new connection for the induction coil by Professor Edwin J. Houston, it's mentioned that the um, the spark of the induction coil is greatly diminishing its length. The instrument used was made by Ritchie of Boston. Okay, here. So this is the rump coil made by Ritchie of, of Boston. It turns out it's actually Edward S. Ritchie of Boston, Massachusetts. And apparently he started building these coils in 1852. Uh, now what I've found is um, he actually um, constructs the coils with flat, of oh, the secondaries with uh, flat spirals just like Tesla did. So anyway, I did some digging it says here, um, Mr. Ritchie, uh, 1857, he describes a coil with a peculiar mode of winding the wires of the secondary by which he obtained six inch sparks. Um, Mr. Ritchie's coil was indeed made of sections, but there were as many as spires of wire in the whole length of the instrument, and each of these was wound up, not in the usual way, but as a flat spiral. Okay, so here we have evidence that Tesla's work appears to have come from um, Edward Ritchie. Uh, so from what I can make out that the particular uh, Rumpkopf coil that was being used by Elihu Thompson was um, indeed a flat spiral secondary in two sections. Okay, after realising um, that the, the coil that L. Hugh Thompson was working with was made of flat spirals, it occurred to me, um, it reminded me of something in Tesla's lecture of 1892, experiments with Ultimate currents of high potential and high frequency. Okay, in this lecture here, Tesla's uh, showing us a 
zinc box, or he actually calls it the destructive discharge coil. It's a zinc, um, it's hardwood cut aligned with uh, zinc on the outside and on the bottom, and the secondary, the primary and secondary is actually split into two sections. Now, it doesn't specifically state in the lecture notes that it's made of a flat spiral, but I'm going to assume that it is. So the primer is actually uh, in two sections, wound equally and oppositely, and the same with the secondary. Okay, so and it's um, the coil is immersed in oil as well. So and he and he shows us a circuit to use, um, just using an ordinary coil to charge cap. Goes. Through the disruptive discharge coil through a magnetically quenched uh, gap to uh, run the circuit. So, but what's not shown here is um, the secondary connected to um, either a sphere and a ground connection, which is so I'm planning on building the disruptive discharge coil. Uh, connected to a sphere and a ground connection. So actually even the ground connection could also be a sphere as well. Now the, the other thing that occurred to me after looking at this zinc box was um, the zinc on the outside. Now Tesla doesn't really explain how it works or what it's for really or anything um, but it occurred to me that Tesla was duplicating, he had duplicated Henrik Hertz's work um, at some point, and I don't know exactly the date or anything like that, but uh, in Hertz's work, there's a book called Electric Waves, uh, where he talks about uh, conducting an experiment with zinc on the wall, which um, creates uh, stationary wave. So I think this device here is to um, pretty much to create stationary waves. That's the whole purpose of this device. So um, so I'm planning on building this. Okay. From what I understand, the the waves generated by this. Uh, disruptive discharge coil um, or obviously hitting the you know bouncing back off the zinc sheet coming back causing interference reflections and according to Hertz in his book electric waves that's what's causing uh, stationary waves so I think I think we've we've got a Tesla has brought together a number of um, let's say concepts into one device. So you, you've got the the coils here that have come from uh, Richie's and uh, Elihu Thompson slash Houston's um, device. Where you've got the flat spirals, and then. Tesla, I think at that time a lot of people were immersing coils in oil, so so the the oil um, acts to amplify the effects as well. And then I think he's in um, the the zinc sheet. From what I understand, that wasn't in L. Hugh Thompson slash Houston's device. Uh, that's come from Henrik Hertz. So he's is I guess he's put three different concepts together into and bringing it all together and coming up with a an amazing device. So uh, so I'm planning to build this uh, disruptive discharge coil. See what it does. I I'm not aware of anyone actually doing it. I think there was one gentleman who's actually built the the coil but not with the box with the zinc and all the other stuff so 
Um, so yeah, I believe I believe um, Edwin Gray was probably using stationary waves in his circuit as well in his in his in his first patent, uh, but that remains to be proved. Um, so yeah, that's it for that.